In this video, we're going to talk about catalysis and how a catalyst affects the rate law and the overall rate for a reaction. So in normal reactions, as you increase the temperature, that means that you will increase the rate constant and thus you will increase the rate of the reaction at fixed concentration of all of your reactants. But it's not always available to you to go through that type of mechanism because you can't always just increase the temperature. Maybe you have some other type of constraints which preclude you from increasing the temperature. Maybe your reaction occurs in some type of solvent which has a fixed boiling point. So you can't heat a, you can't heat a solution past the boiling point unless you get very clever with your experimental setup. But in any, in any case, what you, what you would want is some type of chemical species which can speed up your reaction at a reasonable temperature. So this would be where the definition of a catalyst would come in. So a catalyst would be a chemical species that participates in a reaction without being consumed. And hopefully, if it is a well-designed catalyst, it will greatly speed up that reaction. So a catalyst works by lowering the activation barrier. So in a video on kind of reaction coordinates and activation barriers. So a catalyst makes the energy change of activation much, much smaller. And it doesn't change the equilibrium of the reaction. So it doesn't change any kind of, it doesn't change the enthalpy of reaction, it doesn't change the Gibbs energy of reaction, it doesn't change any of the thermodynamics, it just changes the kinetics by making the activation barrier smaller. And so we can show this type of behavior by making a graph. So this graph will have energy going up on our y-axis and we'll have our reaction coordinate on our x-axis. And you would have the standard case for a chemical reaction, uh, which would be generated by this type of curve here. We have our reactants, we have our transition state, we have our products, and our delta E of reaction is indicated by the difference in energy between the reactants and the products and the difference between the reactants and the transition state is the delta E of activation. Let me get that a little bit further away there. So this second part here is the delta E of activation indicated by the double dagger. And what, what a catalyst would do is a catalyst would take um, the energy of our reactants and of our products is still the same, but with a catalyst, we have the activation barrier is much, much lower, and thus the entire speed of our reaction becomes much greater. So with our catalyst here, our delta E of activation, as I said, is much, much smaller. Well, hopefully much, much smaller. The better the catalyst it is, the smaller the activation barrier becomes. And two other types of terms that we want to define just to get those uh, out in the open, make sure we've discussed them. You have a homogeneous catalysis, and that is where your catalyst is in the same phase as the rest of your reactants. So if you have a gas phase reaction, your catalyst would be a gas. If you have a solution phase uh, re reactants, your catalyst will be dissolved in solution. It's just your catalyst is in the same phase as whatever all of your other reactants are. And then alternatively to that, you have the opposite, heterogeneous catalysis, where your catalyst is in a different phase. Examples of that would be like the Haber process for the production of ammonia, where you have nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, but they react on some type of iron surface. So a metal surface, which is solid, reacting with gas would be an example of heterogeneous catalysis. Okay, so what is actually going on here in terms of the reaction that's different? So 
let's say we have some reactant and you have some product and you have some rate constant which makes that occur. Now let's say additionally we have an alternate pathway where you have a reactant plus a catalyst plus a catalyst yields a product molecule plus the catalyst molecule back. And this occurs with some rate constant called K cat. C being the catalyst here. Okay, so what's going to be our uh, what's going to be our rate law in this case? So we're going to have minus dr dt equals uh, our our reactant is getting consumed by the reaction from R to P, the uncatalyzed case, which has a rate law of k times R. Also getting consumed plus getting consumed by the reaction of the cat of itself with the catalyst with the constant of k cat so we have k cat this being second order it's a reaction between the reactant and the catalyst k cat times r times c okay so we can factor out in this case let's say dr dt equals factor out the concentration of the reactant from it so minus r then in parentheses here we have k plus k cat times concentration of catalyst okay so what you see here is that in the in the even in the presence of a catalyst your reaction is still first order in r so it doesn't change the, the concentration dependence on R. Um, generally what you have is K cat is much, much greater than K. So that is often the case that K cat is much, much greater than K. Um, you see that if that is the case that K cat times C is much, much greater than K, then this kind of term overwhelms the term with just K. And so the reactant, the reaction effectively becomes first order in the catalyst. And because this K cat is often so, so large, what you can often have is very effective catalysis even at quite low concentrations at, of catalyst. So even at low concentration of catalyst, K cat times C can still be large. And as we saw here, um, as we saw from the Arrhenius equation, and as we see from these types of energy diagrams, even a small change in delta E of activation, so this will be delta delta E of activation, the change in how the activation barrier has changed between catalyzed and non-catalyzed versions of this reaction. Even a small delta delta E of activation can lead to a big change in your observed rate constant.